Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to show and explain to you how you can open up and analyze the application log in SAP RP and SAP S4 HANA. So basically, if throughout the program, if you start some processes, if you execute, if you make some changes within the system, then there's a high chance that those changes will be locked in the application log. So uh, based on different areas, different objects, there an ABBA program can create an application log and you can view and analyze the application log, if, especially if uh, there are some warnings, there are some errors or stuff like that, then there's a high chance that you get useful information logged in the application log. So directly, let's get started with some important transactions. So most obviously is the SLG1 transaction. So if we open up this transaction, then you can see within here, basically the transaction to analyze the application log. Within here, you have a couple of selection criteria to enter the object, sub object external id you can enter some time restrictions you can specify um, by whom or what this application log has been triggered and you can specify the log class and log creation and the log source and formatting most probably uh, here you will specify the object and the sub object or most probably the time restriction if you know where the error comes from, then of course you can also specify user transaction code or program. But as mentioned, most probably you will specify the object. If we open up within here the application log, then you can see within here a lot of objects. So here especially restricted to 500 right now. So here you can see that there are a lot of areas, a lot of objects to that application logs can exist. And based on an object, there could be multiple sub-objects. Sub-objects are um, yeah, um, optional, so not mandatory um, if you want to. So, and then for example, I have already created an application log. So uh, let's just um, open this object um, within here up. Then it's important I have created at least one sub object. So there you have also to specify then the sub object. Or you can also do a wildcard search if needed. Then we can leave it like here. And then let's execute this. And then within here we can see all the application logs for this object and this sub object or basically for these selection criteria. And for example, here, if we uh, open this up, then we can see um, in the first some kind of icon, what kind of type of message this is. So is it a success message? Is it a warning? Is it an error? Um, when this application log has been triggered um, by whom? and where and if we double click within here then you have also within here um one or multiple messages so this is basically in german just one example so but if we for example open up this one then here you can also see um, different messages and if you click if you select one entry and click on technical information then within here you can display the technical information of this entry and here you can go into the uh, details also with double click as mentioned and if you uh, would like to display the long text um, yeah then you can also here click on this and then you get the long text so if you would um, yeah like to create an, an object then you can go into the slg0 transaction so here you have to be careful that this table is cross client but within here if we're scrolling uh, almost down within here then within here we can see our object and uh, here under sub objects we can see 
the available subject object so this basically is mandatory if you would like um, with an ABAP create application logs then always you have to specify regarding an object regarding a sub object um, an application log and it's also easier to find the application log later on Another transaction, a more newer transaction besides the SLG1 transaction is the SLGD transaction. So here you will have the same output as in the SLG1 transaction, but within here you can specify the selection criteria in more detail. So here you have some settings for display, or message filter and so on. But if we execute this, then here we get the same result as you could see earlier. So this is quite useful. If you would like to um, also start with application logs and use application log, what is really important is also to define the number ranges and therefore you can open up the SLGN transaction. If you enter this transaction, then you end up in here and then you um, have to maintain the number range for the application logs. Then what is also important, so if you would like to delete the application log, then you can open up the transaction SLG2 transaction. So, and if you open up this, then you can delete expired logs. So here you have um, the possibility to delete only logs that have reached their expiration date. You can specify um, that uh, logs should be deleted that can be deleted before the expiration date or if you would like to yeah, non-deletable logs so if you would just like to um, display only delete those entries and then here you can specify those um, yeah if you want to here you can also um, get an overview of the deletion jobs but with the slg2 you can delete those application logs and if you also would like to get an overview of the application logs then there's one useful table and therefore we go into the data browser into the se16n and here you have the table b a l h d r so for the application log and if we execute this then within here you get a lot of application logs already and if we're going back and if we for example here type in as a set erp up and set erp up um what was it i think with the ending sub so let's search for this here we have it exactly with sub and if we execute then here we can also see those application logs in here if you would like to get to know a documentation of application logs then um, directly within the sap system there's a program offering you also some documentation of application logs and um, therefore we go into the sa38 in the other program execution and here we enter a program it's the sbal underscore documentation and here we have it and if we execute this then here this pop-up will open up and um, yeah we all can <laughs> decide if this is useful or not but here you have um, useful documentation you can call directly within the system if you would like also from the technical perspective some information about this and so on Besides this documentation containing or including already a lot of examples and explanations how to use, how to implement ABAP coding for application logs, there are also a lot of useful programs that you can use. And therefore we go once again into the SA38, into the ABAP program execution. And now we search for SBA l underscore demo with asterisk and here you have a lot of useful 
programs and especially if um, yeah we we, we call the search help and start for example directly with the first one we execute this here some example go for this and then basically yeah within here the ABAP um, application log is directly being called here you can also have a chance um, if we're going back um, and open this once again with this one um, that you can directly call the editor to show the coding or if we're going back and here save this you can also go into the se38 into the abap editor and here of course you can display the coding and explore it in more detail um, when we're using application logs, then we're having one important message class. So it's the SE91 transaction. And here you can enter just BL, click on display. And here you can see all the messages that are being used while using the application log. So as mentioned, application logs are still heavily used in the SAP system and are useful. And there will be a lot more videos about applications log, how you can implement them in ABAP, what kind of nice and useful tips and tricks are there. So please subscribe to not miss those great upcoming videos. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions left, please put them in the comment sections and see you on the next video.